straight up Tennessee. What's happening? It's your boy Ruck in the building today. It's Wednesday on the midweek chat. Listen, man, Tennessee did not practice on Tuesday, but I have a great, great topic that I want to talk about as we are now 10 days. I repeat 10 days away from Tennessee facing off in Nashville, Tennessee against the Virginia Cavaliers. I got a great topic that I want to talk about, and it is very, very, very simple. What five newcomers are we going to see excel starting in the Virginia game? It's straight up Tennessee, baby. This is the midweek chat. I can't wait. Let's get it. It's Wednesday, baby. Happy hump day. Let's go. Good, everybody. Welcome today to the midweek chat and welcome to Straight Up Tennessee. It's your boy Ruck in the building today, man. You already know what to do. It's the top of the show. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification, man, right now so you never miss a video. We are on our way to 700 subscribers right now. Something crazy is happening. And y'all are loving the content, y'all are loving the channel, and we are loving you. As soon as you hit subscribe, man, you join the Straight Up Tennessee family. And so we are so glad to have you guys. Go ahead right now, man, if you have the opportunity, join the channel as low as 99 cents a month. You can be a part of the Straight Up Tennessee family. Hop in the Discord with us. Get ready for football season all fall long with the boys from Straight Up Tennessee, man. I am so excited, y'all. We are 10 days away. 10 days away. Not not 11, not 12. 10. We are so close to finally seeing this 2023-24 team put all of the pieces together and get into Nashville and get to Nissan Stadium. And play the Virginia Cavaliers. Uh, I, I want to start the top of the show off like this. If you're listening also on Apple or Spotify, man, we're glad you're rocking with us. Rate this thing five stars. Let the people know why they need to be listening to Straight Up Tennessee, baby. But I want to start the top of the show off like this. I don't know why Tony Elliott thought it was smart to run his mouth, not once, but twice. And the boy Danny White had something to say this time. If y'all have no idea what I'm talking about, Tony Elliott, Virginia's head coach who was at Clemson uh, with Dabo when they were winning natties, um, said that he actually didn't feel right in his spirit. He asked God. And listen, I don't like when people throw my, my God's name in vain or throw my God's name around. I don't like that. And he's like, I asked God in my spirit and, and which very well he could have, but just in the context, I was like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about you saying all that dog. But anyways, he says, feel it in my spirit. And I just didn't think Tennessee was the place for me. Like he turned down the Tennessee job when Danny white said he never offered Elliot the job. So it's just funny, man, how these coaches and how people honestly show that they were a little butthurt because he didn't get the job. You know what I mean? Like he didn't get the offer. He didn't get the job. And so instead he makes it seem as if he turned the job down. Somebody help me make that make sense. Right? So I don't know, man. All I know is we got the best AD in the game. Danny white, just everything from the tabletop and entertainment district. That's supposed to be coming here within the next few years, all of the stadium renovations, um, Man, just everything that Danny has done to enhance the athletic department, not just football, man, everywhere. He is making impacts 
and massive strides in our athletic department. And kudos to you, Danny. Snaps for you. We hope you stick around, man, for the long haul, man, because you are a guy that everyone wishes they had. But we are the Vols, and we're happy to have you. And, uh, yeah, so like I said at the top of the show, though, man, Tennessee did not practice on Tuesday. Uh, they're back on the practice field today. Um, getting more more uh, locked in on game prep. So a lot of what this week, the end of this week will look like is a lot more intentional details heading into Sunday when it's game week, you know. So they'll finish up this week. Uh, I guess technically fall camp is over. The grind of fall camp is over. They're still practicing, obviously getting together, team meetings, position meetings, um, things of that nature. But we've kind of hit we've kind of hit that point where the corner has been turned. And so now we are the, the team is positioning themselves getting ready for Sunday, which is full on game week. And so, like I said today, um, they're back on the practice field, working through some things, still working out. Kings getting more crisp, making sure alignment and different coverages for Joe. A lot of things on the defensive side of the football, making sure we're attacking where we need to being violent in the specific areas we need to getting lined up having loud noises so we can communicate through the chaos. Um, so they're doing a lot of those things um, as we end this week. We'll have some media appearances. I think Joey Hosley um, is meeting with the media either today or tomorrow. So is Joe. He's doing his preseason um, media appearance so that next week he doesn't have to worry about it at all. Um, he can just focus straight on the game, which I believe Joe is going to eat, 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 eat on that day and i'm very excited to see um what he does and, and how he progresses but very excited to see the rest of this week man get some get some news out there from all of the media guys from rocky top insider vol quest you know the the normal guys on three um jd Pakel, love love jd man um would love to collab with him one day uh Y'all make it happen. Y'all know it's it's such a word of uh, a word of mouth thing man this whole podcasting and just the internet man it is such word of mouth i've learned a lot i've met a lot of people and uh jd man i'd love to meet you hang out get you on the straight up tennessee family show baby you already know what it is but uh like i said five newcomers man it's not gonna be a long show today um but who are the five newcomers that we're expecting to uh show up and, and show us what they're about to be um coming into this Virginia game. Number one for me, I want to go ahead and get it out on the floor. It's Dante Thornton Jr. Um, there's a lot of hype built around Dante from his size, his length, his speed. Uh, but I think what a lot of people don't realize about Dante Thornton is that he can do this in multiple ways. <sighs> he doesn't have to just change the game from the slot. He can change the game from the outside he can change the game from jet sweeps and screens like he can change the game in so many different ways and so i'm anxious to see how josh hypo positions dante in a way of uh that it, that excels him but also really really um shows us what dante can do and what dante is going to going to do this season for the Vols. I mean, if you go back and watch some of his tape at Oregon, you can see the explosiveness on routes. You can see the precise cuts that he has in different ends and different outs on different routes. You can see the straight line speed, man. I went and tried to find, um, not tried. I did find that video where he said he clocked him or they clocked him at 24.3 miles per hour when he was running down, um, running down a guy and dude, it, this man looked like a like a Lambo, like it was the craziest thing I think I've ever seen. And so I say all that to say Dante Thornton, I think we're going to finally get a glimpse into what this year could be for him. Also leading into his senior year. What could that look like? Will he still. Excuse me, family, will he still be here? Will he have that opportunity to truly excel as a Tennessee Vol. I sure hope so. I think Dante has so much potential, and we're going to get an opportunity to see how much of that um, can be displayed in game one against Virginia. The second newcomer to me that I am excited to see 
And I think the entire world is excited to see is Arian Carter. Arian Carter is a freshman out of Smyrna, Tennessee, right in my backyard. And everyone is so excited to see what he can bring to this team and to this defense. We've seen the pictures. <laughs> We, we, we've we seen what he um, looks like. We've seen him make tackles and scrimmages. We've seen um, different players say how prepared and how well he has developed to the college game. Keenan Peely, he's seen a lot of football family and has said Arion has learned quickly about this college game. So it makes me very, very 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 did i say very excited because he is a young cat who's definitely going to be here for the next three years what are we going to see out of arian carter come next saturday in 10 days are we going to see a young guy that's still kind of is trying to figure it out are we going to see a young guy who's way beyond his years and comes out there and really makes some noise and, and does things that make us as fans go, wow, we haven't seen that in a while. I'm excited for Arian Carter. I think the kid's a stud. I'm glad he stayed home. That's the biggest thing for me, I think, is I'm glad that he stayed home. And uh, we're going to get to reap the benefits of him staying at home. His family's going to be able to go to the games. And he's going to put on a little bit harder. He's going to put on a little harder because he's wearing that right there on his chest. That's the old school starter, by the way. That's the old school. Y'all know. Y'all know. The third newcomer that I'm looking forward to seeing is Ricky Gibson. And I think... The thing about Ricky Gibson that's so intriguing is that he's from Alabama. Like, how did we get Ricky Gibson again? I still don't. I still don't know how we got him out of Trustful. That's literally, y'all, if y'all don't know the Birmingham area, Trustful's right outside of Birmingham. So it, Trustful's about an hour away from Tuscaloosa. And um, this guy was a lockdown corner coming straight out of high school and so the guy here's all i'm gonna say about ricky that i think everybody needs to know now i've heard a lot about ricky gibson from different folks listening to josh and swain they got me excited i think ricky gibson is going to surprise a lot of people with how much he plays in his freshman year I think he's got the opportunity to play a lot, and I think he will play a lot because there's just so much he can bring to the table. Speed, versatility, length, physical. He's very physical. I mean, he's 6'1", he's 285, or, or, or sorry, sorry, 285. I'm drunk. I, I think when he came out of high school, he was 6'1", 165. I think he's going to play right around 172 this year. Um, six one as a corner, man, that's a long corner, you know, like for him to be able to get out there on the outside, really get up on some guys and, and hopefully use his length as an advantage to make different plays, make the make the quarterback throw the ball a little bit differently, uh, make the receiver have to adjust differently to the football when it's in the air because of the length. I'm ex very excited to see how Ricky um, plays into what happens next saturday because y'all i'm saying all this these guys should play because we should be up by two three four touchdowns in the first half you know what i'm saying the fourth newcomer that i am very excited to see and i'm not even quite sure he's gonna get a lot of playing time uh, against virginia but i want to see um, and it's kind of a tie so i'm gonna say two guys it's david hobbs and shandavion bradley um, you, you know, those two cats, you got David, who's probably going to play more inside. He's 280 already. Excuse me, y'all. Excuse me. He's 280 already. 
He's built like a champion. Shandavion, long, long edge, gets to the football, long arms. These two guys are going to wreak havoc in a year. But what can they be doing now to progress and get ahead of where they might um, – where, where, where most freshmen might lie that first year. You know, everybody talks about that freshman lull, right? Um, I don't see a lot of our guys having that freshman lull. I know that we talk about it, and I know that it's a real thing. And, you know, they've said that about Christian Conyer, but they've said he's turned the corner, um, which is exciting, which is very exciting. But I think those two guys are going to have a massive impact on the development and growth of what can happen with these young guys moving forward. You're adding Jordan Ross. You're adding some guys into the mix in a year. And so what can these guys do now that will progress them coming into the 24 season? And um, very excited to see these two. Lastly, it's Nico. It's Nico. Nico Ia Maliava. Ima Aliava. Nico should see the field next Saturday. And I don't think it's 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 any coincidence that Josh Heupel, when when Nico gets on the field, he's not just going to sit back there and hand the ball off. Josh Heupel is going to allow him to play because the one thing that Coach Heupel has said is those guys who come in after the starters are out have deserved the right to play as well. He said it last year when Joe came in and was throwing the football when he got in in garbage time. Those guys deserve the opportunity to play. And when Nico gets his chance, y'all, I think we're going to get a glimpse into the future of what Tennessee football truly can be and what it will be, man. He is the future. I think everybody knows that. I think everyone is okay with that. I think everyone knows that if anything crazy happens – Even this year, who's the guy we're turning to? I'm sorry. I don't think it's Gaston Moore. It's Nico, man. It's Nico Iamaliava. What are we going to see from Nico? Are we going to see a young cat who's still trying to figure it out? Are we going to see a young guy who's far beyond his years and is is really going to, like, just show us what a five-star quarterback looks like. I'm thinking it's the last one that I said. I got to also put Ethan Davis in the mix somewhere in there, y'all. I'm excited for ED, man. I love that cat. I think he is going to be a freak. Might be the best tight end Tennessee's have uh, in the last decade. I'm, I'm dead honest. He's a freak. Very excited to see a healthy Ethan Davis and what he brings um, to this tight end room because I'm going to tell you he's going to play. He's going to play this year, 1 million percent. We're going to see a lot of Ethan Davis this year. So, Y'all, it's the midweek chat, man. It's the midweek chat. Ain't nothing crazy right now, y'all. We just gearing up for next week, and I am so excited for what's to come next week. Monday, we are live for our Who is Virginia series video. Wednesday, we'll have a video for the midweek chat. And next Friday is our one more day episode. Man, I cannot wait for football season. We got week zero. You know, Vandy plays Hawaii this week. Notre Dame plays. Uh, so there's, there's a couple football games on this weekend. But uh, there is nothing like what's coming next weekend with the Tennessee Vols and everyone back in full force. So it's your boy Ruck, man. I love you guys. I love y'all. Y'all already know it, man. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification, join the channel, Apple, Spotify. Thank you guys. We will be back on Friday for Chop It Up Friday. We'll have a lot of different coaches interviews coming for the rest of the week. So we'll have a little bit more of a specific broader um kind of retrospect topic like that um and man we'll we'll bring it to you on friday very excited y'all because after friday i'm just gonna tell you bro monday i'm going to be ecstatic i'm not gonna be able to sleep i'm gonna be so ready to get up and just do the uh the who is show with virginia um man get the boy turn oh it's football time 
Oh man, we love y'all, man. Thank y'all for the love and support. Let's let's run this thing up, man. Get us to 700 before the end of this week. Let's get to 700 subs for the end of this week. Let's get a hundred. Let's get a thousand subs before the Georgia game this year. How are we gonna do that? It's a straight up Tennessee family, man. It's your boy Ruck, man. We love you guys. We will see you back on Friday for Chop It Up Friday. And y'all already know what it is, man. It's straight up Tennessee, baby. We out of here.